Hey, it's your bro. Hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can create your own custom functions in C++. So let's get into it. Well, us programmers, we like to reuse code when available and not have to repeat it unless it's necessary. So you may encounter a situation where you find yourself repeating some code more times than what you would like. So what if I told you there was a way where you can write some code only once and then you can call or reuse that code whenever you want. Well, that's the benefit of a function, and we're actually familiar with a few functions already. In the last lesson, we learned about the printf function. Another that comes to mind is the length function. Uh, another is the at function. And you may notice that these tend to end with a set of parentheses. So with functions, they perform some sort of task for us. So what I'm going to teach you guys is how to create your own custom function to perform some task for you whenever you call it. So I have an idea. Let's create a function that will display a greeting for us. So this is the first step you'll want to do in order to create a function. We're going to create this function before your main method. And we're going to type in the word void. And then we need to come up with a name for this function. And your name should reflect the task that it performs. If we're creating a welcome message, we can simply name this function, maybe welcome. And there is a common naming convention with functions. You'll want to be sure that the first letter is lowercase. Then we'll need a set of parentheses and then a semicolon. So this is step one. We have declared a function. But step two is that we want to define what it does. So we can do that just by adding a set of curly brackets after the parentheses, but before the semicolon. That's good enough. So we're going to write whatever we want this function to do when it's called within the curly braces. So we can perform some sort of maybe message to display. So we can see out, welcome to my program. Okay, we have successfully created a function named welcome. When we call it, it's going to do this, whatever is between the set of curly braces here. Now, going back to our main method, we can call this function whenever we want to perform this task. And in this instance, we're just displaying one line of code or one message. So in order to call a function, we're going to type in the name of the function followed by a set of parentheses and then a semicolon at the end. So we will perform this task every time we call this function. So let's try it. Yep, welcome to my program, just like we anticipated. Now we can keep on reusing this code too. Perhaps I want to display a second message. Well, I'm just going to call the welcome function one more time. So this will actually display this message twice then. Welcome to my program, welcome to my program. But I should probably add an end line after this just to make it look better. Okay, so that's the basics of creating a function. Let's create another that displays a goodbye message. So it's gonna be the same process as before. So void, maybe we'll call this goodbye, set of parentheses, then a set of curly braces then a semicolon. All right, and then we will display a message that says goodbye END. All right, so we have two functions now, one named welcome and another named goodbye. We can call either of these functions whenever we want in our program. So for our example, we'll call the welcome function and then we can call the goodbye function. So goodbye, parentheses, semicolon. Let's try this. Yep, welcome to my program, goodbye. Well, I believe we have the basics down for declaring and defining a very simple function, but let's take it a step further. Let's take it to level two. Now, when you call a function, you can also send that function some information. This can be a value, a variable, or even an object. For example, let's say that we want to send a name to our welcome function, and that welcome function can do something with that name. For example, we can display a name that we send it along with our greeting. So if you want to send a function some information, 
when you call that function, you're going to place whatever values you want to send that function within the parentheses. Let's send our welcome function, maybe a first name. So I'm just going to type in my first name as a string literal within the parentheses when we call this function. So whenever you send a function some information, these are called arguments. It's the information that you're sending a function. Think of it like mail. The mail or the letter that you're going to be sending is also referred to as an argument. All right, so this is step one. Step two with sending an argument to a function is that the function needs to be set up to actually receive this argument. And this is done by setting the parameters of the function. So within the parentheses of your function definition, what we're going to do is that we are going to list the parameters of what we want this function to receive. If we want to receive a string that's going to function as a name, we're going to write the data type of this argument followed by a unique name for this value. So we can just name this name. All right, so you can see that the red squiggle went away. So we can now send a string that will function as a name to our welcome function, kind of like we're sending mail to this function. And this function is going to take this name and it can do something with it. So we could actually display our name along with the welcome message. So I'm just going to add that here and this should work just fine then. So let's try it. Welcome to my program, bro. Now, whenever you call a function and it has a set of parameters, you need to send a matching set of arguments when you call this function. For example, if I were to take out this first name, the string that I had here and attempted to call this function, well, there's not a matching set of parameters and arguments when we call this function. So this would result in an error then. So we can't actually do this unless we were to send some sort of string to this function. So let's take this a step further. Let's accept some user input. And this time we're going to send two arguments, maybe a string and then maybe an age. So this will be an integer variable. So we need to list the data type here and then we will call this age. So we can no longer just send a string. We also need to send a integer as well. So maybe I'll just type in 18. So make sure that each argument is separated with a comma. So let's change our program around a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to copy this and paste it. And I will just type in you are age years old. But there we go. And now we have a matching set of arguments and parameters. So now we can call this function and perform this task for us. So let's try it. Welcome to my program, bro. You are 18, yo, goodbye. Now we can send some variables and not just some hard values to a function. And let's accept some user input from the user. So we're going to declare a string variable named name and an integer variable named perhaps age. And we will provide a prompt for the user to type these in. Enter your name. Then get line C in comma name, just in case they type in a last name. But I'm forgetting a semicolon there. All right, and we will do the same thing with age. So C out, enter your age, ENDL, semicolon, C in, age. All right, and now we can actually place variables here because they're going to store whatever values that we assign to them. So we're going to place a name variable and the age variable. All right, this should work now. Let's try it. Enter your name, bro, Washington. Enter your age, 107. Welcome to my program, bro, Washington. You are 107 years old. Oh, and one quick note, if you're sending some variables over to a function, they do not have to have the same name. So for example, I have name and age here that we're sending our function. We can actually rename these when we receive them. So for example, I could change this to username and user age. And then you'd have to change it here too, if you use them. So username and user age. 
And this would work just the same then. So they don't have to have the same exact variable name if you send some variables over. You can rename these. All right, let's take it a step further. Let's go to level four with functions. At least I think we're on level four. So we can have a function return something. So normally we have the set to void. This keyword is the return type, and we're not currently returning anything when we call a function. So I think it would be best if we started a whole new program. And if you want a copy of this, I'll post it in the comments down below, so don't worry. But I think it would be best if we were to start fresh then. Well, I have an idea. Let's create a program that will accept two numbers from a user, and we will take those two numbers, send them to a function, the function will add them together and return the result. So let's begin that program here. Let's create two values, and these can be uh, double variables. So double number one and double number two. C out, we'll create a prompt to enter in the first number. Enter in number one. Okay, then C in number one and let's do the same thing with number two enter in number two and c in number two not three two we're good all right so let's create a function that is named add and we're going to send two double variables as arguments All right, so now we need to create this function called add. So before, when we typed in void, this is the return type. So we want this function to return a result. So we need to list the data type of what we're returning here. So we're going to be returning a double value. So instead of void, we're going to type in double because we're returning a double value. Then we're going to list the name of the function and we need to set up the parameters. So we're going to receive a double value. So we list the data type here, and we will call this maybe num1. Then we need to set up a second parameter. So this is going to be double num2. Let's define this function. So a set of curly braces and then a semicolon. So what do we want this function to do? We're going to add these two numbers together. We could call this double result, we're going to declare and assign this variable right away. So num1 plus num2. All right, lastly, we just need to return the result back to uh, this method call, this function call. So at the end of your function, we're going to return whatever we want. We're going to return our variable result. All right. So now when we call this function, it's going to add these two numbers together and it's going to return a result, but we need to do something with that result. So here, I'm just going to create a new variable. We can call this double result equals whatever there, uh, is returned here when we call this function. And lastly, let's just display our output, our result, so C out, your result is result ENDL. Okay, let's try this then. Enter in number one, 3.5. Enter in number two, 7.1. Your result is 10.6. Yeah, that seems right. All right, so that's what you do to return a value. Instead of using that void keyword, you write down the data type of what you're returning exactly. So just to reinforce this idea of returning a value, if you call a function and it returns a value, there's a data type when you define this function. The data type when you define this function has to match the data type of the value that you're returning. So if our variable result was maybe an integer, we would want to change the return type when we define this function to also be an integer. Or if this was a string value, we would also change the data type in our definition to be a string as well. So make sure that the value you're returning and the data type in the definition also match.
And my last tip for today is that if you are declaring a function, you need to be sure to declare it before the main method because our programs work from the top and work their way down. So if I were to move this declaration for this function and moved it to the end, this would actually not work then. We'll get an error. And you can see that here. So another trick is that for some reason, if you do want your definition for your function to be after the main method, you can actually simply just declare the function and not actually give a definition for it yet. So you do need a definition before the main method. So we'll write that here. So that was double add, and then we needed a set of parentheses, and there were two parameters, double num1 and double num2. And then we're not going to add a set of curly braces, we're just going to add a semicolon. So this would work then. Yeah, you can see it here. It looks like it's working just fine. So with your own program, if you really want the definition to be after the main method, you can do that, but you'll want to be sure you're at least declaring this function before the main method at least. Um, but otherwise, it depends on how you want your program organized. I tend to just declare and define my functions before the main method. So do whatever works for you then. But I thought I would just mention that. So that's the basics of creating functions. If you would like a copy of the code we worked on today, I'll include all of this in the comments down below, both the first example and the second example that we both worked on. And if you're looking for additional practice or a project to work on, why don't you create your own function and post it in the comments down below. But yeah, that is how you can create your own custom functions in C++. Hey you, if you enjoyed this lesson, then you can help me help you in three easy steps by smashing that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.